Megadeth. Megadeth is a myriad of ultra-talented musicians doing mostly super heavy badass music accompanied by Dave Mustaine's angry, maniacal vocals. They have a huge discography spanning more than 30 years. I'm going to compare them to a couple of my favorite modern metal bands, including Evile. Megadeth's first album, Killing Is My Business and Business Is Good, has four good songs on it. It suffers from bad production value and sound quality. They also went overboard with really fast tempos that sound kind of ridiculous at times. Their second album was much better. Peace Sells But Who's Buying had seven excellent songs on it. Their third, So Far So Good So What, had six good songs on it. Then Rust and Peace had six great songs. Countdown to Extinction was a real standout with ten incredible songs. Euthanasia was their first real failing. Half of the album wasn't very good. It had six good songs on it. Then they released Hidden Treasures with five good songs on it. Cryptic Writings was a bit of a return to form with eight great songs. Then there was this weird light rock band called Megadeth. They released this album called Risk, and it wasn't a very good light rock album. It had two good light rock songs and one song that oddly sounded almost like Megadeth. Weird. But seriously, they should have made this a side project. They should have called it something other than Megadeth, and they shouldn't have released Crush Em as the first single, as it really misrepresented what the album was. If they had done that, I would have been more likely to have kept listening to Megadeth after this album, which I didn't for a long time. But I'm glad I did eventually start listening again, because eventually they had some really good comeback albums. But not right away, as their next album, The World Needs a Hero, had five decent songs on it. One of them was a light rock song, which is not the kind of thing I wanted to be hearing after Risk, and four of them were just halfway decent Megadeth songs. Then, in 2004, they released The System Has Failed, with five good songs on it. Not a huge comeback. And that same year, Evile put out All Hallows' Eve, an amazing demo EP with six great songs on it. In 2007, Megadeth released their first really great comeback album, United Abominations, with 11 great songs. That same year, Evile put out Enter the Grave, which wasn't nearly as good as their previous demo EP. They went overboard with the speed here. You see, I like fast metal, but fast metal has got to have a good rhythm. If you just go really fast and frantic, it just doesn't work. It ends up sounding really repetitive. Now, I know all music is repetitive to some degree, but if you're going really fast, then you end up repeating the same thing more times than you would if you were going slower. Speed seems to work best when you break it up into short bursts, with slower riffs in between, or with short pauses in between. Contrasting those speedy bursts with slower riffs or pauses in between makes it seem more impactful and stops it from just running all together into a repetitive mush. In 2009, Megadeth kept going strong with Endgame. It had 10 amazing songs that made me really glad that I went back to listening to Megadeth again. The same year, Evile put out a much improved album called Infected Nation, with seven great songs. In 2011, Megadeth fell off again with 13, only four good songs on it. And the same year, Evile made vast improvements with Five Serpent's Teeth. It had six excellent songs, and Matt Drake's vocals seemed to have really improved, like he took vocal lessons or he just learned to do more with his voice. That vocal improvement totally took Evile's music to the next level. In 2013, Megadeth released Super Collider, which was even worse than 13. It had one okay song and one really amazing song called The Blackest Crow. If you heard bad things about this album and never listened to it, you at least have to listen to The Blackest Crow. It's a really cool song. That same year, Evile put out Skull. Another excellent album with five superb songs that continues the improvement they made in their last album. Then just last year, Megadeth put out Dystopia, a much better album with ten good songs on it. So let's take a look at the top metal songs by Megadeth and Evile. So with the scoring system I've been using, the number 30 song is worth one point, the number 29 song is worth two points, and for every next song you add one more point, 
So the number one song ends up being worth 30 points. And if you add it all up, Megadeth beats Evile pretty handily, 267 to 198. But with the way Evile's been going, if they put out one more album as good as the last two they put out, they might just be able to catch up to Megadeth. Let's compare Megadeth to another great modern metal band, Clone. Oh, they didn't do as well. They have some great songs, but you know what it is? For one, they don't have nearly as many albums, so Megadeth has a greater pool of songs to pull from. And also, a lot of Clone songs are actually hard rock. Megadeth has a lot of hard rock songs too, it's just that they have so many albums that you can find a lot of metal songs for this list. Yep, that's right, I said Megadeth has hard rock songs. Let's talk about the difference here. Now a lot of people have a lot of different perceptions about what metal is, but what I'm talking about when I talk about metal is heavy music. So you gotta have heavy power chords, either root 5th power chords or root 4th power chords, and low-end palm muting. Now rock bands sometimes use palm muting and it goes like... But when metal bands use palm muting with more distortion, it goes like... And also these power chords and palm muting have to be in the forefront of the mix. If it's just this edgy grinding sound in the background, then it's not really metal. Also, you have to be using full distortion. If you use overdrive or partial distortion, like what ACDC uses a lot, then it sounds partially like an acoustic guitar and partially like an electric guitar. That's overdrive, that's low distortion. If you're using that, you're not playing metal. So hard rock has hard power chords and heavy palm muting as well. But the difference is in hard rock, they mix in a lot of other things that aren't heavy, like single notes and other non-power chords. Now, if you're playing a metal riff, you can put one or two of these things here and there. But when it starts to get close to 50-50 in terms of you're playing notes and then you're playing power chords or you're playing other chords and then you're playing palm muting, once the majority of the riff isn't heavy power chords and palm muting anymore, then it becomes hard rock. And if you don't have any power chords or any heavy palm muting, then it's light rock or moderate rock. Now, if you're playing non-heavy things like lead guitar at the same time that you're playing heavy power chords or palm muting, then it's still metal as long as the heavy power chords and the palm muting are in the forefront of the mix. And the same could be said for symphonic elements or electronic elements. If you're playing them at the same time as heavy power chords or palm muting, then it's still metal. If you stop the heavy power chords or the palm muting to play lead notes or to play anything else, then you're getting into hard rock. So now let's look at Megadeth's hard rock songs. Let's compare them to an actual hard rock band like, say, Breaking Benjamin. Oh, they got destroyed. I actually picked out like 15 Breaking Benjamin songs. They're a decent band, but barely any of them are worthy of being on this list when I compared them side by side to the Megadeth songs. Megadeth is a really good band. Now, Breaking Benjamin does have five metal songs that I couldn't use on this list because they're metal songs. I know. Let's take Nirvana. Wow, they did a little bit better, but... Megadeth still kicked Nirvana's ass. I'm a Nirvana fan. I did not expect that. It was interesting comparing the technical mastery of Megadeth to the sheer emotion of Nirvana in some of these songs. But Nirvana just doesn't have enough good hard rock songs to win this list. Interesting though, they have eight metal songs. I'm going to save those for another video. Let's compare Megadeth to Clone again. Megadeth beat Clone in terms of metal songs, but let's check out the hard rock songs. Oh, interesting. The number 30 song is again worth one point, the number 29 is worth two points, and you add another point to make it three points for the next song, and you keep adding and adding and adding until the, the number one song is worth 30 points. And yep, Clone beats Megadeth in terms of hard rock 265 to 200. Let's check out Lacuna Coil. Okay, here it is, let's add it up. Oh shit, Lacuna Coil beats Megadeth, 246 to 219. In case you're wondering, A Toot Le Monde at number 2 is the original version of A Toot Le Monde. The original recording just captured a mood that works better for that song. 
In the second version, Christina Scabia of Lacuna Coil does great vocals, but she's mainly singing backing vocals for most of the song. There's one point towards the end where she really sings all out, and that's cool, she's a great singer, but it doesn't make up for the fact that the mood that they captured in the second recording of that song for the second version just doesn't work as well for the song as the mood that they captured in the first recording of the song. Now I'm curious. Let's look at Lacuna Coil versus Megadeth in metal songs. Megadeth has got to be able to beat him. Yep, they do. 268 to 197. Let's look at Megadeth's old rival, Metallica. In terms of hard rock songs, Megadeth crushes Metallica really bad. But when you look at metal songs, Metallica is clearly better than Megadeth. When you compare the best to the best, at least. I give Megadeth a lot of credit for being better in their later career and being more consistent than Metallica and being a better band overall. But when you compare the best metal songs to the best metal songs throughout the whole careers of both bands, Metallica is clearly better. But there's only one band I know of that can beat Megadeth in both hard rock and metal. Interesting fact, Dave Mustaine actually helped create this band. There was a 15-year-old kid who tried out for Megadeth after Chris Poland got fired. When he showed up and they realized how young he was, they couldn't let him join the band, but they let him try out and he was so good that Dave said, look, I'm not going to let you join the band, but I'm going to do you a favor later on. And later on, he introduced Jeff Loomis to World Dane, and that led to the creation of the greatest heavy metal band of all time, Nevermore. They beat Megadeth in terms of metal songs by a lot. They beat Megadeth in terms of hard rock songs, 266 to 199. If you want to see how they stack up to Metallica, look at my Nevermore vs. Metallica video. Well, I hope you've all discovered something that you like, and have a nice day.